As a Tableau developer, there is no doubt you'll get asked to build a table inside of Tableau. And most users ask for very simple tables. They'll ask you to do pivot tables. They'll even maybe get you to build something more complex with a hierarchy. But eventually, every single user who's familiar with Excel or other tools out there on the internet will ask you for some more advanced capabilities with tables. And unfortunately, Tableau doesn't let you do those things, at least not, not yet. In this video, I'm talking to Merlin from Infotopics, and he showed me a product called Super Tables. It essentially solves that problem. It's a more enhanced version of the table capability that you get in Tableau. It behaves like a pretty modern web Excel slash spreadsheet tool, and it's also got some really incredible hooks into the Tableau ecosystem. And he spent essentially an hour walking me through how it works. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because 24.2 has literally just come out hours before I recorded this video. We had the discussion last week, but this is a pivotal release because it actually opens up the platform to so many more ideas and ways of working. And so I wanted to spend time talking to Merlin about that exact topic. We talked about AI. We talked about what Salesforce can do to help developers grow on the platform. But more importantly, I also asked him, hey, is Tableau just handing over the keys to developers to do the things that it doesn't want to do? I went there with all of those topics and we covered everything in detail. At the bottom of this video, you'll find some timestamps calling out each of those moments throughout the course of this video. So as ever, get stuck in, enjoy the video, and let me know what you'd like to know about 24.2. Merlin, how are you doing? Good, good. How are good. you? Good, yeah. I've, I've, been, I've been super excited to talk to you because uh, um, there's some exciting stuff going on with Tableau and I think your name keeps coming up. Last week I was speaking to Tristan and he mentioned something that you'd built a long time ago that inspired him and I was like, perfect, I'm talking to Merlin this week. So yeah, really good to have you on board. Um, Thank you. Where, where are you coming to us from? Are you in the Netherlands at the moment? I'm from the Netherlands, yes. Good, good, good. So let's let's maybe um, let's maybe give people some context. We were talking about football earlier on. It's the Euros going on at the moment, and we're both disappointed with our teams. I'm obviously disappointed with England, you Netherlands, but um, because this is about Tableau, let's maybe give people some context about like your experience and your history with Tableau, because I think a lot of people watching might not know. So yeah, um, what was the first version of Tableau? I guess. <laughs> uh, version seven dot what was it three i think ah, okay yeah same as me story. love it love it love yeah, it yeah it's a long time ago i can still <laughs> remember very long time yeah 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 yeah, yeah. i Amazing. started using it at the police department where i did a, yeah, a research about what was the best bi tool back then right only one one partner in the netherlands uh, at that moment uh, one tableau partner and uh, okay i had to like figure out tableau or click view or what was it again? I think MicroStrategy, Cognos, even yep. like these yep. kinds of tools. Like, what was the best? Bob J. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's how we got to know Tableau at least. Yeah, for, for everyone else, Bob J is a nickname for business objects. Uh, if, if if you're not sure what I was talking about, but there you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good stuff. And and then sort of, how did you get to sort of? like the interest you have today, right? Because that's obviously like, um, we're talking 10 years at this point. So like the thing I've always asked selfishly is how do you keep passion with Tableau and how do you keep yourself sort of dialed into what's moving? Why not another tool? Why not try all the new things that are coming out? Um, well, it started actually at the police department where I I was, the police was using Cognos, Cognos right. and yeah. um, they were showing me how to build a table with huge queries and it took such a long time. And um, I got to uh, play with Tableau where I could drag and drop a whole dashboard based on, uh, I think it was called some kind of crime thing. Yeah. Uh, and there was the whole department standing behind me. And I was just like, let's drag and just see, okay, what is then theft? And just do something amount and over time. And yeah. they were completely blown away by that. Uh, <laughs> and I was also blown away by how easy it was to just literally right. drag and drop uh, data on your canvas. Yeah. Um, and that was the moment I fell in love and, and yeah, I didn't find it in a different tool until today, actually, that, that okay. ease of use. Yeah, actually, that's quite, it's quite an important, um, thing today. I was seeing someone posted a meme about, um, Power BI versus Tableau and they had, uh, Power BI as Drake and, um, they had, oh, um, yeah. uh, Kendrick Lamar as Tableau and, and <laughs> it's always interesting because one of the comments there was, oh, if you search for jobs on LinkedIn, like Power BI is like three times Tableau. And I was my response to that, I actually responded to the comment uh, on LinkedIn and I said, 
isn't that a red flag, right? Isn't isn't the fact that you need a job, <laughs> so many people doing that job, a red flag about ease of use? Right? And that's sort of how this comes back to what you're saying. Like, oh yes, I, I have a course on LinkedIn, and the people who do the course are not they're not data analysts. They want to know about Tableau because they have to use it to consume data. And so in a good way, you shouldn't need a dedicated job to be a Tableau developer. Everyone should be using Tableau. Um, totally agree. I think yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a great point. Like we have other jobs beyond just, you know, sifting through data. So yeah. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah. Interesting. interesting. But it's a small so, thing um, like, like the double click, right? If you double click a measure, then double yeah. click a dimension, it's done. You have a bar chart. Yeah. It's just these exactly. small things. We, yeah. Makes it so and easy. there's a lot of those in Tableau where you know there's a lot of thought, and I think you know if you go use Power BI, I'm sure there's something there as well. These aren't unique to Tableau, but I think it's the ability to stitch these experiences into a cohesive journey that makes them sticky. Like when you when you pick up your favorite piece of technology, when you pick up your favorite music, there is something about those things all the way through the experience that keeps you kind of wanting that like every every even the worst design product can have a good element but the best design products have good things all the way through so i think that's a super important part of um uh part of the experience um and so if we if we go back to tableau um like what do you do today like well, what's your role and 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 yeah um, i guess we can maybe slowly move into like you know what sure. are you here to show people because i was of course i was keen to get you on to show us more stuff so yeah over okay. to you on that Sure. Um, so today I am the CTO of Infotopics at Fortablo. Right. Um, still very technical on a daily basis, um, but I also lead the development team and a bit of the marketing team. Um, but my main passion still is develop and build right. things like innovate. Right. Um, mm -hmm. And that's what I try to do uh, for as many hours a day as possible. Right. Um, so I'm still heavy into the code actually. Okay. Okay. And how long have you been doing that role? Um, just for context, how long have you been CTO? Well, it started five years ago, just with one other dev. Um, right, then we right. grew a little bit, grew a little bit. Uh, and I think the last yeah. three years I have this role. First with like two, one, one developer yeah. as a co-developer. Yeah, and yeah. now I'm then here with like out. 10 developers plus. <laughs> yeah. But they're all I, different. I, I, I've all developed, I've even had a developer of 17 years old. He's way smarter than I am. Yeah, he's, yeah. The amount of wisdom he has, I'm sure, and experience it brings to you know when you have some of that much wisdom, it brings everyone up to a level because they've seen things and they've, they've they've tried things in in places we've not tried, and they've also remember a world maybe where these technologies weren't as good, so uh, they have a more genuine sense of how to do things the hard way as well, which is valuable when mm -hmm. when things get tough, right? And just going back to you know your experience as CTO. You've been CTO, I think, at a very pivotal point in Tableau's journey because you've probably seen Tableau open up the platform a lot more, right? And yeah. sort of creating a space for you to have ten developers in the first place, right? Like ten, like ten, three years ago, maybe didn't you didn't think you'd need ten developers? Now, um, the story is different, right? Totally, totally. Yeah, it's the. Um... I, I, I my, my first presentation, I had a, uh, I said, okay, Tableau is this toolbox, just a small toolbox. And I said, and you have like a saw and hammer and that's Tableau. But what if you can have like this big, massive uh, um, construction with all the drawers? And I said, the drawers are the APIs. Yeah. And inside right. are all the applications from partners and other right. things you can't imagine. And you can yeah. build them yourselves. Um, and um, I think first I was the JavaScript API. Yeah, now yeah. embedding API, that's what I used a yeah. lot to do things outside the dashboard. Okay. Actually also like dashboard extensions, but then outside yeah. the dashboard, it was quite yeah. kind of a similar API. Yeah. Um, I used the web page element a lot and then with parameters, which was super nice. hacky, but yeah. it was some kind of interactions with outside uh, applications. Um, and then they came and then it, it went quite quickly. Actually, the REST API, of course, was already there for a long time, but yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, that it's a different use case. I always found it the most interesting to be as much as possible to the front end part. Like the dashboard right. extensions are like to the end user. That's where yeah. my yeah, where my passion is basically what I love the most. Mm -hmm. um, so that's also why I tried to be with JavaScript API or the web page element always inside that's the nice. dashboard. Yeah. yeah. And now then in twenty seventeen I think they announced the extensions api and that was the moment yeah. like okay i think this is the thing now's the time this is yeah? it yes this is it <laughs> yeah and Ten i still remember everywhere. yeah i, I the, the first extension uh, i made together with chaling the, the, the dev 
I have to mention him. He's a, he's a legend. Um, okay. We made Show Me More. Um, that was the first extension. And um, with a Sankey diagram, that was the first visual you could make. And I still remember I sent it internally to Tableau and I said, okay, don't spread it yet. It's going to be like a thing we want to sell or something. We don't know yet how what. And then I saw a tweet from Francois Einstein. I think it was in Australia or New Zealand. He was already presenting, like, you can make a Sankey in Tableau. Bam, on the screen. And I loved that because it was like, okay, this is really a thing. It's really yeah, big. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I, I made a video about Viz extensions last year because I got excited with the, the test they were doing. And the video I made was about Sankey. It got 5,000 views in two days. And, like... That is the most amount of like <laughs> instant traffic I've got for any video, any video whatsoever. Wow. And it broke me a little bit because I was like, ah, oh, but it's not out yet. Like now, no. 5,000 people looking for it last year. And yeah. now like the, the, the most common comment on that thing is when is this out? When is this out? And then I kind of played into the, the stereotype about Tableau because Tableau does have this reputation of showing us stuff, but never releasing it. And so like, 10 of the 10 30 of the comments are like oh tableau showing stuff again that you can't use and like now finally it's only like 7th of june almost a year later it's finally out in public so anyway yeah definitely um, well yeah, you could already uh, do it with the dashboard extensions of course the, the correct, sticky diagram correct. the others but this correct. is like a whole different user experience it's a much deeper experience right yeah. because your tableau is giving you a space inside of its platform whereas with, with dashboard extensions it was letting you sit alongside the the platform right so yeah. completely it's a completely different paradigm i think and, and that's an important distinction because i think it's a change in mindset from tableau about how it's going to build the product going forward but then also um the role it wants developers to play right very clearly yeah. Not giving you the keys, but giving you the runway to do the things it, it, it can't, but that at the same time, giving them the freedom to take the platform in a new direction and to, to let more people be sort of part of that shared vision. So, yeah, yeah really. I've always really been good. pushing for, uh, since I actually talked to people from Tableau, I think right. since my first conference, actually, I've been pushing for opening up the platform uh, because, good. yeah, having like your own developers is nice, but having like yeah. thousands of potential developers outside the company doing things you can't imagine is like yeah that's the dream yeah it is it is let, let me put some 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 a question back to you that i get a lot and i hear a lot about that specific point which is um you know is is tableau being lazy shouldn't they be building this stuff innately shouldn't they be making it easier so you know people don't have to buy products th through you and i think uh, last week tristan showed something that i think was super interesting he showed a piece of innovation that tableau haven't done and i was like Yes, that's that's an example of why devs exist. But from your perspective, how would you sort of respond to that um, sort of critique, I guess, that people sometimes level? Well, we, we get a question also, like, why didn't Tableau do this? But well, I think the yeah. answer is the same for the iPhone. Um, um, when they announced the App Store, that was the moment the thing went, the, 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 the world changed, True. basically. And True. you can do everything you want. And you cannot expect one company to build all of those apps. But also... Um, um, you, Tableau will probably never like specialize into a finance topic Correct. because they have to be like a general analytics platform. You will never yes. go heavy into a PL and uh, customized yeah. statement exactly yeah. following the rules. Um, yeah. You will need to have partners who are able to, who are specialized in that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I think it's super. It's a super important point. Focus is actually why you need uh, extensions. It's why you need developers because you can go deep into niches that customers want you to go into. And actually those customers are happier, right? Like if you exactly, can give yeah. a, 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 a table that meets all the PNL requirements or does all the filtering in a, in a nice way, then uh, people are happy. And we see that request. Tableau is great from getting you to zero to 60, but then you get these really tough questions about that 60, 70, 90, 80%, right? And then you start doing hacks at 80% and people are like, oh, you can just do this. And like you get to 95%. It goes to the CEO and the CEO says, but can it have rounded edges? And you're like, ah, okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, yeah, I, th I think that's, um, that's fair. I think if you have, want to build everything in the tool, you're yeah. also going to be building a monster probably. Um, yeah, exactly. It, True. Yeah. True. You have to yeah. focus yeah. on the core. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. So anyway, I cut you short. You were telling us about your role as CTO in for topics. Let let me let you carry on. Sorry, that was a, that was a good sort of little tangent to go oh, right, off. Right. But yeah. Um, 
Well, what do you want to hear? What do you want to know? I want to hear about what you built. What what was shown at uh, Tablet? Oh, okay, okay, of course, of course. And and, and, yeah. and let's let's dig into the software. I, I took yeah, you off track, go. so you... okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, so um, yeah, I'm actually very proud of this. But Tableau showed um, super yeah. tables during the Tableau yeah. keynote together yeah, with yeah. Power KPIs. And they showed our new capability we are adding to super tables, which is the ability to actually, like you're used to from Excel, type into right. the table. Just type right. anything that you want. You can add a new column for a comma, for example. You can add a new column for a budget. You can actually mm -hmm. edit existing cells. Nice. Um, and all that information will be stored into a separate table, which you can then okay. just join back to your primary data source. Data source right. And you can, you have basically your primary data source, your updated information and you can do all kinds of new things with it. Um, yeah. Incredibly powerful. Many customers asked for that for a long time. We already have right with stream, of course, doing the right stuff, right. but doing the things inside super tables makes it like, it's not an excellent, it's like, really like Excel. Well, who right. doesn't love Excel, right? Um, <laughs> like I think the uh, there's to... a company that competes with Tableau that likes to call themselves uh, spreadsheets. Uh, we'll come back to that in a second, but yeah, I'm sure you know who I'm talking about. But anyway. Yes, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> well, and what I, what we uh, we thought like, hey, if we have super tables, um, and we give the, give it like right back capabilities. We you get like yeah. a whole new product, um, and that's what was being shown on the on the keynote. Uh, yeah. Super cool, all but also very short and a very short demo. Not really. It was, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it also yeah. went. There was something on the screen not going well. So you saw, of course, the demo on the, on the watch along. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think it's cool to show that here and maybe go a little yeah. bit deeper into what it's actually Correct. doing, what you can do with yeah. it. Yeah. And then last week, we have been doing a hackathon with the team, thinking yes. about, okay, what do we want to go next for as a company? And we have added AI capabilities to this piece of software. Nice, nice. Um, which is going to, yeah, give you like as a dashboard designer, yeah, but also as a dashboard viewer, giving you new capabilities you didn't know you could do in a Tableau dashboard. Yeah. I think that's going to be a, uh, that's what I want to show you. Yeah, yeah, amazing, amazing. We'll put a pin in the AI piece until after you've shown stuff because I think AI is such a big topic. People, people are getting so passionate about it. But um, let's see what you've built, and then we will uh, we'll, we'll touch on the sort of chat chat yeah. afterwards. Um, so what we have here, this is a super tables uh, table as a vis extension, mm -hmm. and um, we have uh, a region, a province, and a city, and like two columns. This is all. This is for my demo in a minute. So this is yeah. uh, this is just a flat table. It's actually sample superstore data, but I just renamed a bunch of things. Okay. Um, and this is this is already. Um, yeah, th this is super tables. Maybe give you a little introduction to it. Yeah, um, go for it. Yeah. It, it's it's yeah, basically yeah. like the ultimate table for Tableau, where you can easily group columns by just dragging it on the group bar. You mm -hmm. can expand it like this. You can uh, inline filter, so you can, for example, just search for Los Angeles, and you get Los Angeles. Um, you can also remove columns by just dragging them off the canvas, or you yeah. can like pull them away or reorder oh, easily. Yeah. There's also mm -hmm. an option to pivot, so you can just hit the pivot icon and you can make your own pivot tables, just like you're <laughs> used to from Excel. Nice. Yeah. And well, it, it has a lot of capabilities that people love from a table, like just copying some cells, uh, paste it over, for example, mm -hmm. things like that. Um, but a highly requested feature is the ability to write in write basically like an excel sheet like type into this so what right. we have been adding is the write back capabilities right there and with this okay. you can set up a write back connection with our write back extreme application mm -hmm. and all the magic is happening over there meaning oh, if i if i'm going to type in this table information is being sent to our product write back extreme that's handling that saving it to a database uh, of your choosing, of course. And then yeah. we pass it back to the super table and show it in the super tables. So I'm just nice. going to show you how it looks. Um, so what we can, for example, do in this table is add a column, uh, for example, for comments. Let's, let's call it like remarks. Um, yeah. And it's a single line text. And we can just add it. It will reload. And we get a new column in our table right there. Remarks. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can Very actually quick. just start typing in this. And this is all real. So I can just say... Uh, um, this is a comment about New York. You hit enter and right. it's done. Yeah. This information yeah. is now written back to a database. Nice. Um, it's quite useful for um, for pe people who want to do feedback. Like um, I think insurance is a good example. Need to add notes on a claim or um, exactly. if you're going through an IT support ticket, you need to add notes as you go through. You could do this in the dashboard, right? 
Exactly, yeah. And um, so this is now in the sheet, but of course, if you add it to a dashboard, it's part of your dashboard. The next thing mm -hmm. we will add is right click and the ability to just add a note here, just mm -hmm. like you used to from an Excel sheet. That's not yeah. here yet, but that will also be there. Yeah. It's like a comment, yeah. Exactly. And you can also um, do things like bulk updates, which is also an Excel feature. So if you say, okay, we want this comment for all the East region uh, cities. Mm -hmm. uh, let's, let's, the only thing you have to do is just select all the re records we want to update. Oh, nice. And then maybe type something like a, a comment, hit enter, and it writes it back for all these records. Oh, I just want to nice. show you that it's actually doing this. So what I did already is I um, create a cross data source joint with my superstore and this table. Okay. It's called WBE with AI. That's my right yeah, back table yeah. on the yeah. left here. And whenever I hit this blue refresh button here, you will see that it refreshes my data source. We will mm -hmm. see a new comment column popping up called remarks right there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Just refreshing it. Uh, here we go. Remarks. Yeah, yeah. There it is. Yeah. I can create a new worksheet and just add That's it to my it. worksheet. Maybe add cities to it. And I already have and You it. can see all of them are there. Nice. Yeah, Very exactly. Good. That's it. So it's extremely easy. Um, and I can, of course, put it on the map, do all the things like that. Um, yeah, do whatever but, you can with Tableau, right? It's uh, yes. Source. But you can go good. a little bit further. So it has now one, com uh, one column called remarks. But I can also type into uh, the, the, the cells. So let's just undo this. And that's the demo that was being shown on the Tableau dashboard. This is not a yeah. use case you always want, but I can just type 5,000 here. Yeah, to correct values or something like it could be stock takes, right? Yeah, or, exactly. Um, and then um, yeah. it will refresh the dashboard. And what you will see on the left is that it will create that, that column, the co number of companies amount. Here, mm -hmm. there it is. It's a measure. Yeah. And it will have a value for New York with 5,000. Right. And then I can create a calculation saying, like, hey, if I have uh, a value in my like my WBE with AI table, then mm -hmm. use that one. Other one, use the original data source value, right? So I can right. create an if else statement calculation to, to um, or actually you can do things like, you do all kinds of things with it. You can also create a, for example, a budget column um, if I want, just add a budget column here. And then I can also start at typing like a budget, things like that. So it's all 6,000, maybe 7,000. So like, I can add, add budgets. Yeah, yeah. It reloads. Nice. Very good. And this is how it's easy very it is. Fast and easy. Yeah, it's very it fast is. and easy. Like I've used I'd used like a version of this in the past, but what I'd not appreciate maybe I think my setup was poor because um I, I guess I was sort of one working my way through it, but what I'm noticing as you're using, because you're you've obviously got a lot of experience with this, you're pushing it a little bit more than I did, because I think I was just going through and slowly adding stuff. But yeah, you're just working at the pace that people would work at, and it's it's native inside of Tableau. There's no sort of fun and funny games or anything. It's just it's just native capability. You've got the marks pane, you've got yeah. your pills on the left hand side, and you can you can kind of bring a bit of your own juice with this uh, additional table. And I think an important thing to highlight, you've said it already, but you're not changing the source data. You're adding the changes to a separate table, right? And that kind of exactly. keeps the sanctity of the original data source. You're not sort of messing it up. Yeah. No, no, I'm not touching the real data. I'm only yeah. just writing yeah. it to a separate table. Yeah. yeah. And then That's just perfect. join it back on IKEA, basically, which in this case yeah. is city, but it could also be like an order ID or anything else, what you what your unique key is of the table. One. Yeah. Good. Right. Yeah, and as you can see, I, it just it just reloaded. It's a Viz extension um, improvement that needs to be done, but sometimes it reloads. I just reconnected yeah. it. It reloads. You see all the information is still here. So it, it also, yeah. when you open a super table, look at the uh, data from your worksheet. So what we're mm -hmm. using here on the left. And it also looks in the right back API and retrieves that data, joins it together and shows it right here. Right. Yeah. Perfect. So for yes. end users, there's no development needed. There's no, uh, um, yeah, there's no. It's no literally programming out of the box, nothing. ready to go, right? Exactly. Um, That's so it. To point to the right place, and yeah. with that table that gets created, like, what does like what does the user need to to do there? Like, what if like ten people are using the dashboard? How how are those how are those sort of tables? How do those tables work? Um, so you mean super tables or with the writing capabilities? So with the writing capabilities, so you, let's say yeah. I've got this dashboard, I've added a comment, and then someone else has got a dashboard and they've added a comment. Are they being appended to one big table of, of changes or are there like separate tables that are you know being kept for each each session, if that makes sense? 
Yeah. Um, so this is the, the it's it's being released in Q3. This is one of the things we're de uh, designing at the moment. Is right. What do what do we want? Do we want to give them like the end user, right? We give them a yeah. dashboard. Maybe just go mm -hmm. to this dashboard here. We give them a dashboard, and do we then want them to uh, be able to like connect to Ripeback themselves, like I'm doing here, right. or do we want this Ripeback connection to already be set up and they can only use it um, because right. the, the, so they can only, for example, when they uh, open the dashboard, type into the remarks column, and that's it. That's the only thing they can do. Yeah, right, lock down a bit. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And maybe you can even say like, you cannot uh, update existing col columns. You can only uh, add add or add data to this remarks column, right? Because there's maybe a little yeah. band behind it or something else. Uh, yeah, that's what we are designing at the moment. Um, but the great thing is with Rapid right Extreme, all these questions have been answered before. Um, <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah, but, yeah, so we know exactly what to do. The only thing is like, what does the customer expect from this? Because this is a, this is more like Excel. So what, what do they expect? Yeah. And um, I can also imagine that people would love to have the ability to create their own like um, like their own uh, like local. How would you say like like local? Oh, okay, uh, yeah, like a thing. little. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So that yeah. they can, for example, go here and say, okay, I want to I want to create my own use case, and I don't want yeah. a remark column. I want something else to store my notes. And every time I open my Tableau dashboard on Tableau Cloud, I see my notes over there and not the from For that dashboard. Yeah. yeah, like a workspace essentially within the workbook, right? Like, uh, yeah, uh, better than the comments or better than uh, you know what what people do is they actually export the data and go do the same thing in Excel, right? Like that's that's why exactly. people ask for the download button, whereas here you're kind of you're kind of catering for that need in the dashboard, and that's actually convenient. That's the problem with a lot of you know these yeah. things. It's not convenient. Uh, and therefore, people extract the data to go do it where it's convenient. So this is yeah. a nice solution to that. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, and I think Supertables is already helping with this question a lot. So I think one mm -hmm. of the unique selling points is that it actually helps you to reduce the amount of exports to Excel because you have the Excel capabilities in your hands inside the Tableau dashboard. Yeah. Uh, and this is only going to help with that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's a, it's 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 such a bizarrely simple. A product. I'm going to call it a product. It's a it's a simple solution and product to a very common problem we've had in Tableau for a long, long time, right? Because people want, uh, let's call it the user experience they're familiar with from Excel, but they want it brought into sort of the modern world. Like people ask for filters, people ask for dynamic search. They, you know, write back. All of these things are, are the things that Google have made us familiar with in Google Docs, right? Um, yeah. And so you've kind of brought that experience inside of Tableau here, which is fantastic. So really nice. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Good. So in terms of, um, if I talk a bit about like building this extension, like how easy was it once Tableau said, okay, we're going to have this extensions capability to to sort of build this and 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 bring it bring it to life. I'm not I'm not sort of talking for like uh, how how was it built. It's just more how do you, how quickly was it how easy was it to mobilize your team to kind of do this and get to like a V one of the product and sort of how's the journey been up until I guess twenty four two is about to come out. So that's going to be the big release, I guess, to, yeah. to everyone. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the, this product is now almost five years old. Right. Um, we we co-developed it in the beginning of our company together with a company uh, mm -hmm. which is a Tableau user and he asked like can we have like a better table um, and I'm actually willing to help fund it so um, in return for a free, for a lifetime license basically so that yeah. was the, the deal we made um, right and um, yeah it turns out to be a, it was a yeah a very basically. popular great yeah. investment from that company yeah <laughs> exactly and also something you would not expect uh, not expect. Uh, in directly if you would build this yourself, for example. Yeah. But um, um, at that point, we made it as a dashboard extension, and it ha it was super simple. It was it was only having the like the minimum viable product features that customer requested, and nothing else. Yeah. And if you see how it evolved over five five years, um, it became it's like hands down like a it has so much capabilities. You can basically almost do anything with it. Yeah, um, yeah. And uh, we just, for example, added the capabilities to have a tooltip per column. And that tooltip can be an individual customized HTML tooltip per column with buttons right. inside and images and everything you want. And that, that means that you can, if you only have three columns, wow. 
you can have like a completely different tooltip or column with information about a customer, for example, maybe yeah, a location yeah. with an image of a location and some information about yeah. the location and a button yeah. to go there on Google Maps. You can build whole applications with it. Um, and, and so, and that's just the recent added feature. And there's so much <laughs> more we're doing. And then the next thing we have, we've been working on this year is of course, making it a Viz extension. And yeah. um, essentially this product is a hybrid. So it's a dashboard extension and it's a Viz extension. So it's still for us, we treat right. it as one product and right. the code is smart enough to figure out like, okay, am I a dashboard extension? Am I a Viz extension? I have to behave a bit right. different. Right, yeah. right. That makes sense. Cause I was gonna ask about that transition. Like, cause you know, Viz extension API stuff has probably only come into like focus in the last seven months, right? So like, yeah. Yeah, you've you've had you've not porting is maybe the wrong word because I think you're still working in the Tableau ecosystem, but you've definitely had to adapt the code to to be conscious of the environment because a dashboard extension and a Viz extension have completely different levels of let's say interaction expectations. Right? Exactly. And, yeah, yeah. And 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 you've kind of had to work around that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so just for uh, an example, the dashboard extension has to basically look at the dashboard and figure out to get this data somewhere from the dashboard. So we always say that right. you have to um, build a data sheet, which is like a hidden worksheet where we retrieve the data from. Like a raw um, data, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so it's basically like in the dashboard, you search for that worksheet and then you get the data from there. Mm -hmm. But on a Viz extension level, you don't have a dashboard. So you're always you're already on the worksheet level. So you're like one level deeper in the API yeah. and yeah. everything is happening there. But also things like filtering, for example, is working completely yeah. different. Normally we have to say, yeah. let's add, a, let's uh, um, apply a filter to that worksheet on the dashboard, for yeah. example. But it's not possible because we cannot access that. So you apply it like to yourself and then yeah. through a dashboard action that's being deployed to the other worksheets. So it's like a whole different way of thinking. Yeah. Okay. It's and maybe it's a bit technical here, but yeah. That's how oh, it no, it's, ne it's never too technical for this okay. challenge. Uh, like uh, anyone who's still listening after 33 minutes is definitely in the right place. So don't worry Good. about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. I was, I was going to say the nice thing about the Viz extension is it can also access the data model, which which I think is richer than maybe the dashboard extension because the dashboard extension essentially presents like a single table with everything you need for the Viz, for the dashboard extension, but the Viz extension has way more access to, I guess, what's coming behind it, the data model, and with with all the new energy going into the data model, um, that's good. Is that a fair assumption to make? There's there's more you can do with the Viz extension and the data source than you could with the dashboard extension. It, bo it both essentially is a get summary data async function, so it's both right. still the same function. But what I okay. What I do think is great about the Viz extension is that we can now use the native tooltip function, for example. Oh, so we can just I see. ask for a tooltip right. Right. and get right. a tooltip. Right. Right. I just I disabled it here, but you can also show you like native tooltips is like a big benefit. Um, in all our products, yeah, we have to build natural, custom right? tooltips that look like Tableau tooltips, and you would also yeah. be able to customize them inside the configuration, but you all had to build yeah. it yourself. Mm -hmm. um, in a configuration plane and how people should do that. And well, you have to do a lot of parsing yeah. and stuff to be able to make it work. Uh, and I can just use the, just use the native one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's, uh, that, that's actually A, a time saver for you, but B, it means the experience feels familiar. Like, cause that tooltip, exactly. it has to, tooltips are the kind of one place where maybe you want them to look the same across all charts, even if, Let's say I'm using your super tables and I'm using, I don't know, Sankey from somewhere else, right? Like you want the tooltips to be consistent across those. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And you can also use the keep only button, the execute button, all these kinds of cool things. Yeah. yeah. Nice. 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 Excellent. Good. So, so yeah, like where do you go next with this now? Like you've, you've like, I always think like how, how much more can you develop tables? I'm sure there's, there's tons of ways I've not thought of and <laughs> um, you probably know all the limitations, but yeah, where would you go next with this? Oh man, there's so much possible, but um, imagine you um, like parent child tables that you can have a child table if you open oh, a yeah. row and for example, yeah. you have a, uh, um, yeah, you have a sales manager, you can open the sales manager and see like his recent deals in a totally different format inside the table. That's a parent child relationship. Um, right. that's, that's, I think very interesting. Um, and of yeah, course yeah, yeah. the capability I'm going to show you in a little bit is also very interesting. Yeah. But there's, we have a whole roadmap full of ideas and things we actually are going to work on. Yeah. I'll bring up the company we were talking about earlier, Sigma. Sigma always showcased that 
parent-child sort of nesting. That's actually one of like their big thing, right? Like mm-hmm. being able to drill into your data. It's kind of like a weird analogy because I think that comes from Tableau in the first place. But anyway, um, <laughs> it's 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 it it's that sort of ability to explore, but in this tabular format, right? There's a lot yeah. of there's a lot of uh, relationships opportunities that you can kind of build into your data and i think going back to your point about logic and being able to do different things in each column the way you've set this up suggests that you've got a lot more freedom than you know a typical table would actually offer you something like excel you couldn't do the kind of things you're doing which is which is great exactly yeah yeah yeah, yeah. good so um yeah where where next like more more drill down what about um you mentioned ai earlier on where 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 is that going to sort of come into play i'm sort of curious to see how how would ai help this use case as an example okay good yeah maybe it, it, that's a fun so i i, I brought up a little uh, idea um, yeah yeah so two weeks ago we had a hackathon with the team mm-hmm. um already thinking about this for a longer time like how can we jump on the ai hype train <laughs> Yeah, not just yeah. to jump on it, but actually think about <laughs> what kind of value can we bring to the table with yeah. our products and, and when we add AI into it. Uh, and I think we have two extremely good use cases. Um, and one of that is, is this one, um, which I think is extremely fun. Because okay. uh, during and, and the demo I'm going to hear, do here is, is together with you, by the way, you're going to help me. Um, okay. So I'm not going to do a... <laughs> Uh, demo I have prepared. I'm just going to see what nice. happens if I'm you gonna, give me the input. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we're going to do it together, right? I love these kinds of demos. Or just let's see what happens. Um, but during the keynote, there was one demo where they were looking for a new location to go on holiday, right? Like what's the best location to go on holiday? Yeah. Question to you is, if you have like a list of cities you would love to go to when um, yeah. on holiday and you you and you want to make a tableau dashboard out of it. You have to figure out uh, more columns, and then also figure out the data in those columns, like like the yeah. temperature of those cities, but also other interesting things you have to think about. Mm-hmm. That's going to take a lot of time to Excel it together or Tableau prep it together or whatever True. how you're going to do yeah. it, right? Yeah. And I thought, how can we make that process easier and and do it into the tableau dashboard without leaving it by adding. Yeah ideas or columns of data and then visualize them instantly in your tablet dashboard without leaving the tablet right. dashboard. So okay. that's so d- what we're going to try here, to do. Basically. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so what we have here is, a, and I thought, okay, what would be, would be a fun topic? Um, so I said, okay, Tableau conference, we're here with all Tableau people in the, uh, in the, yeah. in the video. Um, so I thought, well, can we together find the next ultimate Tableau conference location in the US? Maybe it's San Diego, maybe it's something mm-hmm. else. But I hope we can figure out together where that would be based on yeah. your and my opinion of what is important for a city to host a tablet conference. Yeah. Right. Shall we do it? Yeah, good. Let's do it. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah, yeah, Great. Yeah. All yeah. right. So what we're going to do is let me just re- disable these columns. We don't need them. Is use the new AI feature right here. And with okay. this feature, we can ask ChatGPT for an additional column of data. And we can ask it like, hey, can you create a column with, and, and add this information to the table? Right. And that's gonna, I will show you in a second. Um, what's that gonna do? Maybe it gives you like a little demo here, what it can do. So okay. we can say, let's do a, um, are you into food? Yeah, I'm into food, I love my food, okay. yeah. <laughs> let's do a, uh, let's do a uh, um, best food of, of these cities. So we, we, yeah. we're gonna find out like, what's a good city for, uh, for for the conference and number one is of course food and just do this. So what are you gonna do here? If you can just ask for, give me the most popular dish yeah. uh, for these cities. Cool. Oh, okay, so reference in city and state is gonna be like the column it uses, right? Yeah, exactly. Makes and we're, we're, yeah. we're doing this with a reason because we want to send as minimum information to the, AI, the, the API as possible because as possible. It, has a, it has a limit. So we're not gonna send the yeah. whole table, we're just gonna send one column. True, because um, and, those and of will course, be tokens as well, right? So, it's the whole token yeah. thing, yeah. So yeah. You, uh, we already have a new version which can add one or more columns, but this one just sends one column. Yeah. Let's see what happens. So technically what's happening, we're going to send this uh, this table or like this column basically back to uh, yeah. OpenAI. It's mm-hmm. going to add a column to it for uh, the best food, and then it's going to send it back. And with the right big extreme, uh, a connection. We're gonna write that information into a table, and we can start okay. instantly start using it. Okay, 
Let's see what's yeah. happening. So it's generating data from OpenAI. I would love to have a Einstein AI uh, API. If we're talking about new APIs, I would love to have an Einstein AI. Do it API. within the Tableau ecosystem, yeah. Exactly. Oh, yeah, look at that. Best and look at that. Pizza. We got new food here. Wow. Which is just a column. And apparently I'm going to go to North Carolina, Charlotte. I just saw barbecue and I'm like, I'm right there. <laughs> North Carolina? Uh, yeah, it? so Carolina, sorry. Um, uh, where was that? Charlotte. Yeah, barbecue. There yeah, we go. Barbecue. Great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right, so that's just a very simple uh, demo of what you can do. But you can yeah. also, well, you can iterate on this, right? So you can also say, okay, um, but what's the main ingredient? Because I don't know all of these. Uh, I don't know what Tex-Mex is. No yeah. idea, actually. Maybe it's mm -hmm. like, what's the... Uh, Give uh, what the main ingredients. Uh, give me the main ingredients um, yeah. present in this dish. Just check, right. and then we can actually select the best food column, Use which that is new a column. new column, <laughs> yeah. and just add another column to it. And this is We're kind of using it to do data. What was it? What's what's the word for this? Um, uh, so it's like feature engineering, isn't it? A little bit in data science, where you're kind of adding, adding, adding quality to your data, but you're also doing data prep at the same time. It's kind of what you're doing, right? Because yeah, you're using source data, but you're adding value to it as well. Wow. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. And the cool yeah. thing is, whenever I hit refresh dashboard, it will refresh my data source, and on the left, you will see these two columns appear. And I, I find this like kind of magical because now main ingredient <laughs> is there and best. You're food. building your data source in the dashboard. It's kind and of I can like just, a, it's like a very weird concept to get, but it makes sense. Yeah, right. I can just go yeah. into a new worksheet and build a vis on this and say like, hey, well, let's make a, uh, a best food vis, what appears the most, things like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's so amazing. question for you is, so if we would like to go to a new city for a Tableau conference, what do you think yeah. is the most important thing for you? Oh, well. We already have food, but what other things do you think? I think, oh, that is a great question. Um, public transport, I think, is pretty key because that can that can that can sort of break your experience of getting around and experiencing the city, especially if there's a lot of people there all at once, right? So Las Vegas is good at that, um, but some cities have definitely you've had to like really plan your journey, like your lifts or your Ubers. I think in New Orleans, I was using Lyft and it just got very hectic because everyone was using Lyft that week. So yeah. So. Right. So what, what question should we talk, uh, ask AI for, for this? Is it um, rank the public transport for this city. Um, uh, or should we do something about uh, Uber, Lyft? We can also yeah, let's, 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 yeah, like, Let's ask ask the availability of Uber or Lyft or something like that. Let's do something a bit more challenging. <laughs> yeah. Like this? Yeah, that sounds um, good. Yeah. If both yeah. is possible, uh, rank high, only one rank. So medium, otherwise low. Yeah. I'm not yeah. sure if this is going to work. Just figure it out. No, let's okay? try it. Let's try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because this is interesting, because this is also going to be limited by OpenAI's index of the world, which I think does stop yeah. at a certain place, right? Exactly. Yeah. But actually, um, here we go. Let's see. Where is where is the column? It's to the right. Look, this is like amazing. Oh, right? wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. I want to so, make a vis about this and just say, oh, we have to refresh the data source. I forgot that button. <laughs> and then just go here and just put um, public transport here and then let's do a count of city for example yeah nice it's um yeah and we made a God, yeah a this yeah. nice <laughs> with with uh with 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 completely kind of the two counts. like what's the word and like not engineered but you know what i mean we've we've gone and sourced the data like if you had to scrape that manually you'd still be doing it right now right you'd be looking yeah. for like uber statistics from somewhere It'll take you 30 minutes to find it you can't find it um it's kind of interesting and i think the question i have back to you then is have you seen chat gpt hallucinating on some of these responses so like because because what we're doing here is actually in the dashboard Mm -hmm. um, how do you mitigate against, um, not necessarily just hallucinations, but how do you mitigate against some of the issues you have with quality around ChatGPT and sort of its responses? Um, is it about yeah. sort of the scoping that you showed me or is it actually a bit more nuanced than that? Well, um, so this is the thing we are, uh, of course, also experiencing, experience, 
experimenting with. Yeah. Um, one of the things what you can do is give it a temperature. That's what it's called, right. I think. Right. Higher is like you have to be, you can be more creative and lower right. is, like, or it's the other way around. Lower is you have to be like more strict to the answer. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's one of the things. One of the other things you can, for example, say is like, hey, if you don't know, just don't give an answer and not make up something. Right. That's, that's a thing. Um, yeah. But we also, today, actually, I was playing with this as well. And I was um, looking at um, conference centers for the cities. Just try, try mm -hmm. like, hey, is this a question? And one of the cities was Springfield. And that city is actually in the US, I think, four or five times. If yeah. you look at um, Google Maps. And it was actually picking the wrong one. So it's also about your, uh, your, your prompt. Right. I was just saying, give me the, uh, does this city have a conference center? And then I said Springfield, but I was not saying Springfield in, well, I'm right. not sure what it was again, but Springfield in this state, right? Right. And then it gave me the right answer, but previously it was giving me the wrong answer, which was still so the right the answer. Prompt but it was, engineering as well. Yeah. It's prompt yeah, engineering. I think it's going to be a new skill. People have to learn. Like, how do I yeah. really write a good prompt? I'm also learning it. Um, yeah. So probably here, there's also going to be answers that are a bit hallucinated. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I tried, but for example, if you look at population, at the airport, conference center names, I, I, I cross-checked a lot of those and they all match up. The if match the prompt up, yeah, is correct, exactly. yes. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is, that to me, I think this just focuses on where you use this. And that a good example is survey data. How many people are doing analysis of survey and they have like two paragraphs of text where it's someone's written some qualitative feedback about something and you want to do quick analysis on that, but you need to do it on like, you know, 10,000 survey responses. This is potentially a really good solution to that because on something like that where it's about summation, like summarizing, ChatGPT is very good at that stuff, right? Where it's not having to exactly. go into the world and find like facts. This, you're giving it some of that information. You're telling it to sort of synthesize it into a new format. Now, AI is very good at that. And that's sort oh, of yes. one of its strongest use cases at the moment. Yeah. And that's also how we use it in Rapid Extreme. It's the other uh, example where we are into implementing AI features. Yeah. Um, where you have to do, for example, summarization. So you have to write, for example, a quality report. That's what you can do with Rapid Extreme on your dashboard on that specific data point. And it can help you to analyze a whole chart and, and concise yeah. it into like four bullet points. Put it in the, wow, the, yeah. in the right back application, you can hit save. That's one of the new things we I'm also gonna, can show you in a minute if you want. Okay. What yeah. works as well. And so there's a lot of uh, uh, yeah locations where you can add this and uh, where it really helps you. Yeah, and th this is, I think, one of the use cases I found, like, as a develop desktop developer, I find it, like, extremely fun to play with. Right. Um, and, the, and the devs also have this feature, so you can, say, create multiple columns. And oh, wow. it's a bit buggy, but I can, for example, um, shall I, am I going to do it? Um, it's probably <laughs> not going to work, but you can do things like this. You can just say... Give me some interesting columns, which helps me to decide where to host the next double conference. Oh, just tell it's it. It's convention center, blah, blah, blah. And then you do the city column. And then it just generates like five columns with average temperature. It was something like yeah. it has a conference center, yes, no. Uh, something yeah. about an airport. It and figures some it out. Yeah. It figures like some random columns. And you can also be more specific, of course. Uh, and it just adds those columns. You have it to your, you have it uh, available in your, in your left side if you just start analyzing it. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. And it, you you made a comment about Einstein AI earlier on. What's the context for that? What's um, is it is it instead of using ChatGPT using something that's a little bit more trusted in the ecosystem? Is was that sort of definitely where you're going with that? Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. So um, there's a reason why Apple is not launching OpenAI new AI features in Europe, <laughs> yeah. right? We're from yeah. Europe. We're not getting it. There's also a reason why they're asking like, do you want to send this to OpenAI uh, in their iOS 18 update if you want to do something outside the Apple intelligence system? Right. Um, because it's all about trust that, and that system using your data. Um, and I know that one of the things uh, Salesforce talks about well, is about trust and their trust layers um, yeah, yeah. to make sure that your data is safe and it's, it, it, it remains safe. And I think like if we can talk to the Einstein AI, which is also part of Tableau, of course, now uh, in yeah. many places, and then we can just, we can um, yeah, basically, instead of going a different route in Tableau, we can take the same route, which benefits both of us. And it also benefits the you, customer because it knows that they're using a safe API and I can use yeah. this with, with confidence and trust. Yeah. And I think there's a lot that Einstein is doing to remove sensitive data 
um, yeah. from the customer, right? So you can you can piggyback on that innovation, right? So that 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 allows for more confidence and sort of a deeper use of this um, potentially than 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 more. I'm sure it's coming. Um, because if you think about the way Tableau is doing this, they they're gonna open it up eventually. I, I think they want things like Viz extensions to be deeply tied into the platform. So if you can create a use for those tools and the company has those tools, and um, no Tableau announced like a new pricing structure with Tableau Plus. So that naturally suggests that they're going to want to see people use those credits and use those interfaces a little bit more. So it's a really good way of kind of adding value in that sense. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good. But I think trust, trust is the most important one. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, Tableau, Tableau has to earn some new levels of trust because, you know, as a 20-year-old company, I think for a long time, much of that trust has been built over time. Mm -hmm. But with the acquisition of Salesforce, there's potentially this new challenge of having to renew some of that trust. You can't just assume that customers trust the brand anymore because of AI is making everyone question, like, people's people's values around data and people's perceptions of what a analytics tool should be i think all of those things are up for grabs at the moment and people are reevaluating the the decisions they make uh, and the answers they have yeah totally agree with that yeah 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 good okay um that's super awesome i really love this it's very um very interesting i, I guess my only question with um with the ai point then this is sort of what i was going to ask earlier is with with Salesforce's sort of push into AI, do you feel like there is um, there's mileage in this? Because the, the 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 challenge I've always got with with not with not with AI specifically, but with any trend like this that catches all industries by surprise, is that everyone has a need has this sense of needing to be talking about this capability. So everyone pivots to it, everyone runs to it. And I think there's this discourse within the AI community that actually the la large language models, the LLMs we have today are actually at their peak. And it's only with tremendous resources can you get them to the next level. But even then the benefits are quite small. And then if that does tra transpire to be true, actually you know people are putting a lot of time and energy into something they think has more runway than it actually does so i'd love to get your sort of take on you know salesforce's move into ai tableau's move into ai and then sort of how you think that that might play out over the coming months not necessarily years no one's a profit but you know we're about to see the fourth wave announced at dreamforce they're talking about new interfaces for tableau how do you think this is all going to come together Big, big question. I appreciate. So, <laughs> oh, no. I think I, um, I always remember, um, and that's also what's being shown about AI every time. It's a video of um, Will Smith, I think, eating spaghetti. Oh yeah, yeah, eating and spaghetti. The, yeah, and yeah, it was like yeah, the yeah. the one year ago video where it was completely uh, uh, random and not good, and then one yeah. year later they showed the same prompt basically, and it was like a yeah. super good video already. Still, some fingers missing or double fingers or whatever, yeah. uh, but it was already good. So I think well, if that's one year, um, <laughs> what, what about, and it's the, the, the whole technology is always like, it always, it, 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 it always goes like this, right? So if we're already yeah. here, what is the like, next year? It's going to be like four times as good maybe. <laughs> and then we cannot really understand anymore. Like, is this real or not real? Or, um, so I think the same is happening here and the same yeah. is happening to, I think we just touched the the, the, the tip of the iceberg tip of the iceberg indeed of ai yeah, yeah. Um, in this the, the last year basically um and now we're also going to see more like really useful uh, features and capabilities of it instead of all the gimmicks uh, like the really <laughs> useful things and yeah. i think I, i'm already used i'm not sure about you but i've used it already on a daily basis um yeah to, to, to sometimes rewrite some of my um dutchy english <laughs> but it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a simple use case but it I think it's like a great True. sentence, but yeah, if you uh, rewrite it, uh, bit, then it's... I use a tool called OpenAI Whisper on a daily basis to transcode my, to get, sorry, to get the transcript of my videos out of um, the video and into subtitles for, for YouTube. And right. then recently I've started actually 
uh, narrating. So I just get my voice recorder, I just start talking and I'd record an, record an audio clip. And what I'm doing is recording my thoughts. But then I'll put it into OpenAI Whisper and it will generate the transcript of my thoughts as I was talking, very human sense. But then I'll put it into ChatGPT as a final step and I'll say, right, these are my thoughts about this topic. Can you like synthesize this into two paragraphs for an email, right? And it does re really good job. Again, it's that thing that it's good at is synthesis. It's not good at it's not good at going to search the facts. It's not good at being really genuine with thought, but it's very good at taking something and summarizing it. That's why exactly. it's good. It's, it's sort of a language engine, right? It, it can yeah. do that very, very well. Too many people push it beyond that language area. And I always think, ah, you kind of, like I was trying to explain to people like a large language model is like a big mathematical model for what comes next, right? That's all it actually is, right? Yeah. <laughs> like a, yeah. Think of the world's biggest probability engine, like, and it's just percentages about what comes next. So if you ask it, hey, as we did here, what's the best food in San Diego? It's gonna go and look at all of its data and it goes, hmm, typically when people talk about the best food in San Diego, fish taco comes next, right? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and and that's how it gets its answer. I find it's it not the same as synthesizing it uh, and from from like, you know, a paragraph of text where you're kind of trying to get the themes and trying to understand what what that is, so. Yeah, so super, there's one, one, one other use case we have been playing with. We have a tool called the Mule Scheduler where you yeah. can uh, create PDFs or PowerPoints or Excel files from different dashboards on your Excel cloud, combine it and send it at a specific time to people. And yeah. one of the things we uh, we have always been thinking like, is can AI analyze that image and then give me a summarization of it? And I, I'm imagining like, what if you're blind, for example? Oh yeah, yeah, And I cannot, re I cannot see that image, but what if I, it can just read it for me and then give me the highlights of it, right? Like what's the latest? Yeah. And it can actually there do it. So that's what we also have as a demo with the new OpenAI 4 model. You can give it an image right. and just say, like, can you analyze it with a good prompt? Yeah. Um, yeah. And it gives, gives yeah. us like uh, um, three uh, uh, highlights uh, based on the latest sales data and three like things that went worse based on yeah. the charts. It was pretty good. I'm like, okay, well, if this is possible. There's so much more capabilities for disabled people. Um, yeah. Any, any I think there's an app. Um, I forget the name, but there used to be an app where essentially um, uh, blind users could sign up to the app and if they needed help they could open the app and then point their camera and what it would do is it start a video call and on the other end a volunteer would answer the call and tell you what was on the app right wow, wow. and they they completely integrated open ai um uh, uh the the sort of the four row model yeah yeah and they've basically go into a place where they don't need volunteers anymore because the technology is very good, right? Yeah. And that's 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 literally what you're just describing there. Like um, exactly. being able to give audio narration for people who are visually impaired um, or to be able to augment uh, with narration, right? So some people who can see or can hear, but for, for whatever, you know, challenges they have in their life need the additional context of yeah. what's in front of them to be able to sort of uh, experience the world. So... I think it's um, yeah, super powerful technology nonetheless. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Yeah, yeah. I'm very excited about it. Uh, yeah, this is awesome. I think this is really incredible. I'm super excited to see how people sort of pick up your features and pick up your product. I think that's going to be an interesting journey. It probably also takes time, right? Because not everyone updates the newest stuff straight away. So no. you're probably thinking about like a six six month timeline to really start to see, okay, what's the uptake like? And then I think there's this final point about Tableau Cloud. Viz extensions feel like they work the best if you have Tableau Cloud, right? And um, you're going to get it in desktop, which is fine, but it's it's very clear that that web experience is sort of what Tableau is pushing for. And I wonder, I don't know, maybe this is like a, this is like a, it's a theory I'm making up on the spot here, but I wonder if like we fast forward the world of Tableau, part of the reason Viz extensions exists is because they need to build the old charts using this new technology. Does that make sense? So they've Ooh. kind of they've kind of built Viz extensions to enable developers to build new stuff. But I wonder if they've actually built it to go and fix the old stuff so they can bring everything into the new world. Wow. wow. <laughs> but the Viz engine is such a powerful engine. 
but that but but is it now why why isn't why isn't um all the stuff you're building in in in, in visql right like right. we live in a world in in a web we live in a web first world and mm -hmm. i always feel like that's been the big criticism of tableau is that visql is a powerful part of everything but the, it was conceived and developed many years ago and there's probably new ways of doing things today that that can be native across multiple platforms not just um you know running through through the query engine i think the the heart of what's happening is probably still the same it's just it's like visql version 2 running on the web whatever it is right it's just oh, interesting. running with javascript it's still visql it's still the same stuff talking to a hyper you know a data source right it's just now designed for the web rather than this sort of funky thing that was sending queries in SQL, right? <laughs> mm. um, but yeah, that, that's point. my sort of, that's my little like, you know, if I could put a little bet or like, I always like to look at what Tableau does and I'm like, hmm, but why would you do that? Like, you know, why would you? And, and the thing is, the reason they can start with other charts is because those are lower risk that people have no expectations of how a Sankey works. So of course you can let it out to the community, see, let the devs sort of try all these things out. But then, you know, when you come back to build the bar chart, it's got to have all the features Tableau has today. And that's actually oh, yes. very hard to get right because what they then have to do is build that porting between VisQL and the new thing. So they don't have to just build the new charts. They also have to build the step in between. And that's, that's the really tough thing. So, um, oh yeah, as a um, um, like show me more is now five years old. Yeah, it is incredible. We still get questions and how like we never thought about that. So imagine <laughs> if you have like Tableau, one hundred twenty thousand yeah. companies yeah. building yeah. the weirdest yeah. things with the bar charts yeah. and light yeah, charts. Yeah, and yeah, you have yeah. To... yeah. Well, people do yeah. hacks. I mean, this is Tableau twenty years yeah. down the road, not addressing features that have been asked for for ten years. There's there's going to be hacks left, right, and center. And maybe that's what this this sort of new wave is about, resetting the 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 game and saying, okay, there's a new product, this is how it's gonna work and tough luck, you know, this is where we're going. Right. Yeah. Well it's interesting. I think that the whole vis extensions is is there at least to start supporting new types of vises, which right. are not supported by the Visco engine or yes. never be able to build with the Visco engine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like the Senki, for example. Um, yeah. Without data densification, of course, that's the most important. <laughs> that's exactly what Tristan said. Like, the, please, dear God, don't let me do data densification. <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah. Although I'll say, like, data densification has had less of a need with the data model, right? Like, with the data model, you can achieve the same sort of results without having yeah. to like work so hard. But you still need to understand the concept, and it is a tough concept to sort of materialize cool. excusing the sql terminology materialize it in your head because you're yeah. kind of doing very abstract like abs like mathematics with data it's not a straightforward thing at all um, well this is a good example where the web is like exceptional um because yeah. as a, a sankey built from svg it's like extremely fast fast exactly yeah. exactly yeah yeah uh, svgs are just one of those things where y you can just imagine like uh, I, yeah, have you heard of Zvetl? Zvetl is like this web. Um, yep. I forget what it is. It's, is it like an API or framework? I never know which one of the two it is. It's but a framework, right? Yeah, I think so. I think it's you build think stuff swelting. on top of it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Whatever. However you say, it, I have no idea. I keep yeah. calling it the wrong thing, definitely. But I know that a lot of people have done really interesting <laughs> visualization capabilities using that because of its SVG support. And the value there is that you can then define like custom charts because an SVG is just a mathematical formula for, mm -hmm. for an object, right? It's, it's yep. just like a map. I like to tell people, think of it as maps in, in Tableau with polygons, rather than looking at images where you have layers and squares, you have maps that says, okay, a circle is this big with this wide, or this has 23 sides and it happens to be the rough shape of the United Kingdom. And if you multiply it by 10 everything can scale infinitely and everything can go infinitely small so it's it's a much better format but anyway we digress <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit of fun 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 conversation so, something yeah. i'm going to do starting today and you're going to be the first person i'm going to ask this um because i'm starting to talk to more people about the experience of tableau so um the first thing I'm, I'm going to get you to do is to actually ask the next person a question and it's something that you know Stephen bartlett does on his podcast but 
what people get to see here is they'll know who's asked it and they'll get to see who's answered it. So I have I have two guests lined up for the future. So if there was one question you could ask that that person, you don't know who they are, what would it be, I guess? And it could be anything. It's completely open to you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, okay. 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 So it's going to be a desktop question then. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's a good choice. I can give you context. I think this person would know a good answer. So, yeah. Okay. So, uh, the question is, which new feature announcements at the Tableau conference you never forgot? Okay. Yeah. You'd never forgotten, did you say? You never forgotten. Yeah. Like the most okay. mind-blowing thing most they memorable ever announced. Ones. Memorable. Oh, that, that's, that's great. It. Yeah. That's What's your most question. memorable feature announcement of the, the yeah. Tableau conference? In the end, data <laughs> okay. depth and stage is like my main highlight of the conference. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. What's the most memorable moment for you? Okay, yeah, we'll have to. I have an answer, but I'll answer it in the next session. Okay. I've got to keep the carrot. I have to keep the carrot coming. But when we hang up, I'll tell you my answer, so you do yes. get the answer today at least. <laughs> right, <laughs> and then I'll do it again next time. But yeah, um, that's super. It's a great question, fantastic question. I'd be interested to see how that gets answered. But um, yeah, listen, uh, thank you, Merlin. It's been fantastic. Um, I've really enjoyed sort of what you've shown. Um, like what you showed was super simple, but so powerful. And I think, you know, one of the reasons I'm talking to more and more people is because there's so much happening with Tableau outside of the product that I don't think gets sort of time in the usual space. So I'm trying to talk to more people to to sort of g give them the platform, but also get them to showcase the sort of stranger sides of, of the platform we don't get to talk about. And that, that highlights that Tableau is a platform now. It's not, yes. we talked about desktop, but I always say to people, I think, you know, five years ago desktop was the biggest part of the like the whole thing 60 percent of it was all in desktop today i think the platform has exceeded desktop so things are growing in desktop they're growing outside of desktop there's so many places you can get started with tableau whether you're a developer data analyst engineer infrastructure person there is some part of tableau that needs your skills and so um, yeah, I think you've you've done a good job today of showing people that you can come at it from a product perspective, from a developer perspective, and then you know you could still bring all your desktop love and and understanding into that world as well. So so thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs>